This is CNN 10. Happy to have you along this Wednesday. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. Three years to the day after a ferocious Category 5 hurricane made landfall in western Mexico, the region was bracing for another Pacific cyclone Tuesday evening. This time, it's Hurricane Willa. At one point, when it was still out at sea, Willa had rapidly strengthened to Category 5 status, the strongest classification on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale. Willa's sustained wind speeds reached 160 miles per hour, but the storm weakened as it approached Mexico. And on Tuesday afternoon, it was a Category 3 hurricane with wind speeds of around 120 miles per hour. The first area directly in its path was an archipelago of four Mexican islands called Islas Maria. And after it passed over them, Willa was expected to arrive on the mainland between Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. Airlines canceled their service to those cities as Hurricane Willa got closer, and Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto directed his government to do everything it could to protect those in the storm's path. On the ground, forecasters were expecting large and damaging waves, and rainfall of between 6 and 12 inches that could cause flash flooding and landslides in several western Mexican states. This has been an active hurricane season in the Pacific, including Willa. There have been 10 major hurricanes in this region this year. That ties the record in the Northeast Pacific that was set in 1992. Opening to the public for the first time on Wednesday, the Hong Kong Macau Zhuhai Bridge. Those are the places connected by what's now the longest sea crossing bridge on the planet. It dramatically reduces the time it'll take commuters and tourists to move around the region and it's covered with cameras to keep tabs on drivers. If they're detected yawning too much, for example, police could be notified. There's also a catch for people who live in Hong Kong. They'll need a special permit to drive their cars across the bridge. Most will have to use either a privately operated shuttle bus or hire a special car to cross after they've gone through the immigration check necessary to travel to mainland China. Also, critics say a different bridge that's expected to be finished in 2024 will make this one redundant. Still, the new crossing stands as an unparalleled engineering effort. China rarely does anything small, but even by Beijing standards, this is big. So big, Chinese President Xi Jinping attended the opening ceremony. This massive 55-kilometer, 34-mile bridge is the longest sea crossing ever, connecting two Chinese territories, Hong Kong and Macau, to the mainland city of Zhuhai, cutting travel time from three hours to 30 minutes. It has two artificial islands, an undersea tunnel, and four and a half times more steel than San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge, a wonder of engineering and a key part of China's plan for a greater Bay Area linking 11 cities and 68 million people. A big plan drawing big criticism. The regular driver in Hong Kong can't use this bridge. Not allowed. Oh, it's a white elephant, a big, big white elephant. What else? Hong Kong lawmaker Claudia Mo sees the bridge as yet another way for authoritarian China to tighten its grip on semi-independent Hong Kong. Similar to the high-speed rail line to Guangzhou that opened last month, called Trojan Train by some. They're trying to uh, flex their muscles, telling Hong Kong people to behave, especially after the umbrella movement. They think Hong Kong has become uh, very unruly, very disobedient and very ungrateful ultimately that uh, we need to be taught to listen an expensive lesson at that she says hong kong paid nearly half of the 20 billion dollars to build the bridge a staggering sum given the city's widespread poverty and crippling housing shortage the bridge took nine years and cost seven construction workers their lives conservationists fear it could also kill off the endangered chinese white dolphin like it or not this bridge is here to stay built to withstand earthquakes, super typhoons, and cargo ship collisions, a symbol of China's determination to push forward with its own agenda, no matter what the critics say. Will Ripley, CNN, Hong Kong.
A specific type of CPR can give anyone the power to help save a life working only with their hands. Every year in the U.S., there are more than 350,000 cases of cardiac arrest. It's not the same thing as a heart attack. In a heart attack, a heart muscle gets damaged, often because of a blocked artery. In a cardiac arrest, the heart stops beating and a person stops breathing normally. The vast majority of cardiac arrests, around 90%, are fatal. But the American Heart Association estimates that between 100,000 and 200,000 lives could be saved if cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, is given right after someone goes into cardiac arrest. A type of this treatment called hands-only CPR is exactly what it sounds like. Learning how to give it could help you save a life. After all these years, heart disease is still the number one cause of death in the United States for men and for women. 600,000 people a year roughly die from a heart attack or from some sort of heart problem. Almost all of those, 75 to 80 percent, are preventable. Just through dietary changes alone, you can start to reverse heart disease. Stress is probably the big common denominator when it comes to so many of these diseases, including heart disease. Cutting back stress is certainly going to help. If you stay social, you're actually likely to have lower rates of these various diseases. Most people have, have heard or seen CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, in the past. But right now, think about it. If somebody dropped in front of you of a cardiac arrest, would you know what to do? One of the things that's changed with regard to CPR over the last several years is just what they do is called chest compression only resuscitation. So think about it like this. You're just going to do the chest compressions on somebody who is suffering from a cardiac arrest. If you, if you need to sort of have something in your mind in terms of how fast to be doing those chest compressions, as it turns out, the song Staying Alive by the Bee Gees provides a perfect tempo. If, if you do this, if you learn CPR, if you learn where your defibrillators are, uh, not only might you live to 100, you can help someone else do the same. 10 second trivia. Of these U.S. states, which was the last one to be admitted to the Union? Oregon, Colorado, Washington, or Oklahoma? Achieving statehood status in 1907 was Oklahoma, the last one on this list to be admitted. Delaware is known as the first state. It was the first of the original 13 to ratify the Constitution. Hawaii became number 50 in 1959. Baby Harper has been to both of them and every state in between and all before she was six months old. Her home is in Toronto, Canada. Her folks use their parental leave from work to take their new baby on the road. After almost five months of travel, documenting their stops on their Instagram page, Harper and family recently completed their journey in Vermont and they've contacted Guinness World Records to try to certify Harper as the youngest person ever to visit all 50 states. True, she won't remember any of this, but her parents remember Iowa as the state where she rolled over for the first time and Alaska where she first ate solid food. So they're Delaware of the milestones, all the main things that happened while they were Oregon, far from Oklahoma, Tennesseeing how everything Connecticut's across a washing ton of sites while Wyoming around and eyed a whole lot of merry land. That's CNN 10 state puns for the day. I thought about trying for all 50, but I just wasn't quite in that state of mind. I'm Carl Azus.